Welcome back to DM Prep. My name is Ian and I'll be your DM for today. Today we are prepping Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, a speed run. Uh, so this isn't going to be, here's how you run this session. This isn't going to be, here's how to run this NPC. This is going to be how to run the entirety of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus in one session. So if you want to see someone else do it, check us out this coming Saturday, uh, the 19th, December 19th, 2020, um, at 9 a.m. EST. Uh, and I will, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna be running the entirety of Descent and Overness in probably about 12 hours. We're starting at level 20, um, so that's how it's even possible. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna try and do it as fast as possible. So there's three things that I want to identify, uh, by the time I'm done this prep session. Gates, splits, and shortcuts. Uh, so gates are, in my opinion, you know, my definition of a gate, is something preventing the game from moving forward. It's either an NPC they need to meet, or something they need to learn, or a threat they need to overcome, or an item they need to find. Something stopping them from moving forward. Uh, splits are literally what we're going to put on our screen as like the speed run targets. It's essentially going to be like a short list of gates. Um, you know, not every gate is going to be a split, but I think every split is going to be a gate. Could be wrong. Um, and then shortcuts are how can players skip gates entirely? Um, you know, there, there's, there's essentially soft gates and hard gates, it, but I'm not going to go that far into it. You know, what are things that players, very high level players at the very least, can do in order to skip massive swaths of content? So let's just dive right in. Um, so the first thing that, uh, that we need to do is identify how does the adventure start? The adventure starts traditionally when Commander Zaj conscripts you. There's the word, conscripts you, uh, says you are now Flaming Fist, deal with the Dead Three, the, the Cult of the Dead Three. That doesn't make sense for a level 20 campaign, so our very first gate is how do I get the players to care about the Cult of the Dead Three? So, um, learn about the Cult of the Dead Three. Cool. Um, so there's our first gate. Um, once they learn about the Cult of the Dead Three, then they need to learn how the fuck do they, you know, how, how do they deal with, you know, how do they start to deal with that? So they need to learn about the Frolicking Nymph Bathhouse. Uh, so in the book, the bathhouse does not have a name, um, but, uh, you know, I gave it one in my campaign and I like Frolicking Nymph. Uh, I think it has. Um, yeah, Frolicking Nymphs. It's got Frolicking Nymphs carved into its front gates. Also, uh, sorry, I'm, I have not been looking at chat yet. Uh, thank you for being here, Legend of Pi, Lunar Flower, and Shadows. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm I probably going to need help at some point, so I'm, I'm happy you guys are here. Um, what's going on in Discord? Um, so, uh, so they have to learn about the Frolicking Nymph bathhouse. And then traditionally what, the, what happens is at the Frolicking Nymph bathhouse, they learn... Uh, Learn about um, the Van Thimpore involvement. Um, and then usually what would happen here uh, is the players would then go to Emric. Um, why is that? Um, so that's a good question. Let's ask. Um, Mortlock, blah, blah, blah. Don't care. Mortlock. Here we go. Um, Mortlock. I was betrayed. They conspired with the brothers. Cool, cool, cool. Family paying dead three cultists to murder people. Yup. Uh, mother's one of the three remaining members of the Council of Four. Sure. Um, blah, blah, blah. Dead three cultists receive regular payments from Amric. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking they're probably going to skip the Low Lantern. Um, there, like, there's really no reason, like, for them to go to Amric first. They should just go straight to the Venthamport Villa, right? Could skip Baldur's Gate entirely by having them drag into Avernus. I could do that, but I'm not going to, and here's why. When I run a speed run, I want to run it as close to the book as I can. Because if I start just making these huge, you know, swaths of changes and massively changing it, did I really speed run a, the descent to Avernus? Or did I speed run some campaign that I made based on Descent to Overness? You know what I mean? Um, so I am going to keep it as close to the book as 
possible. That said, our beginning is going to differ a little bit. Obviously, I said that, you know, Zaj can't conscript them. They would tell him to go fuck himself. If, you know, if, if uh, yeah, if you got to do the cooking by the book. You know, you can't be lazy. Um, if, if Zaj said, you're conscripted, you're flaming fist, they would tell him to go fuck himself. Uh, and then they would probably go, you know, do stuff themselves. Um, so instead of Zaj conscript, conscripting them, I'm going to take a, one tiny leaf out of uh, the book that I wrote. <laughs> no, I didn't write a book. Um, take take, a, take a, a page out of my own book from when, the last time that I ran uh, Descent to Avernus, which is that the campaign is going to start with a giant flaming hell spike that lands in the city. It's going to cause untold destruction. I haven't decided where. Let's find out. Let's decide where. Um, Baldur's Gate. Um, so we got the bathhouse, we got the villa, Elfsong Tavern, Low Lantern. I kind of just want to put it in the harbor. I don't hate that. Let's just go a giant flaming hell spike lands in the harbor. Um, as we begin, giant flaming hell spike lands in the harbor. Um, we're going to open note. I'm going to open that. Save, close, close, speed run. <sighs> okay, I don't have notes. No, I didn't start writing note files until like way late. Uh, oh, that didn't work. Um, nope. Christian rules, character art, math. No. No, so um so I'll probably go back and rewatch um rewatch. Oh, you know what? I had my notes on Discord. That's what it was. Um I used to write notes to myself on Discord. Uh do I have a Vernus sessions? No, I don't. I think I deleted stuff as I went along. Oh no. That sucks. That sucks. Okay. Um, so I'll have to rewatch the Flaming Hell Spike episode to um, get inspiration for read aloud text. Cool. So I'll have to I'll have to do that at some point. Um, that is literally the beginning. So the players are probably going to immediately want to rush into action and check it out and go see what the fuck is up. They'll learn that it's infernal, um, in, you know, in, in some way. Um, and then I have asked my players, uh, to, uh, to just try and play along at the beginning, um, so that the, uh, the adventure can happen. <laughs> um, so... Next gate, uh, after learning about the Vantham Port involvement, they're going to head to the villa. Or Low Lantern. They might go to Low Lantern. I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? Low Lantern will be like a five-minute detour. Um, so they'll go to Vantham Port Villa eventually. Um, so they need to find the infernal puzzle box, the shield of the Hidden Lord, and Thavius Krieg. Optionally, some dude whose name I do not remember because he wasn't in my other game. Falister Fisk. Um, they need to learn about Elturel's fate. Uh, together, they can piece together. They can figure out El Terrell's fate. Uh, once they figured out El Terrell's fate uh, and, you know, decide to do something about it, um, the next gate is the Tuning Fork, tuned to Avernus. Um, okay. 
Um, a, a, instead of measly, let's say easy. Easy arcana check. Um, so gate is find tuning fork. Find a tuning fork attuned to Avernus. Easy arcana check and point them to candle keep uh, to get their hands on one. Um, and I already know that um, our wizard player has prepared uh, plane shift. So that's super useful. Uh, incidentally, speaking of our wizard player, I'm going to switch the overlay, uh, the D and D Beyond overlay, to our uh, to our speed run. I got to pick characters. Load already. All right, not Ewan, not Zop, not Ander. We need Ben. We need Althea, Rubek, Roland, and apparently Sean has renamed his character. Okay, let's hit. Save. Okay, cool. Uh, so you got the new characters. So th these are going to be the characters. Uh, you can check them out in the overlay if you're writing on Twitch. If you're on YouTube, sorry, there's no way for me to put this information uh, on screen. Um, an air splitting crack and a roaring whoosh shatters the sky, causing an extra dimensional rift. A giant metal python shoots through with veins of flame several stories high, impacting the ground and the harbor waters as a tremor dissipates through the cobbled streets. Collapsing a nearby guard tower, the waters turn an inky black. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good start. Let's throw that in the notes. Just throw that in there. Um, I'll clean that up, uh, with the, uh, cause I, I do want, I want to, I do want to use the, the stuff that, oh no, it's the very beginning. It's not too long. Um, I do want to, uh, rewatch what I did. Cause I want, I want it to kind of rhyme, not like the text, but the running of the campaigns, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, so find a tuning fork attuned to Avernus. Once they find the tuning fork, they can get to Avernus. So, chapter one complete. All right, chapter two. Um, so, um, you know, they, they might have Rhea with them. Doubtful. You know, if they decide to go to the to the Low Lantern, Rhea will probably end up, you know, going with them. Um, if not, uh, then screw it. You know, they... Uh, also, I haven't decided what to do with Lulu. I guess she's a... Um, um, I, I guess Lulu is as written with, um, what's his face? Would the Python resonate with the appropriate harmonics? Sure, let's go with that. Uh, or they can use the Hell Spike to tune a fork. Sure. Um, let's go with that. Um, so, so yeah, Lulu is going to be in, um, Candlekeep or just outside of Candlekeep with Traxagor. Uh, if they make it to Avernus without the, uh, without Lulu, then I will do what I did in, um, the last time I ran it, which, which is have her, uh, appear as part of the ritual of returning with, um, uh, what's the Grand Duke, older Raven Guard. So when they arrive in El Terrell, um... So I guess the next gate is go to hell. Like, get to hell. Yeah, that, that's that's the gate. Um, which brings us to our very first split. Um, our first split is going to be called go to hell. Because why not? Um, so once in El Terrell, uh, learn that High Hall uh, is where a defense would be mounted. Um, so this is this is, you know... A thing that I'm going to make available to them basically either if they ask me like where should we go or if they um, you know just ask like or if they find literally any friendly NPC it's gonna be just okay what do we do uh, you know we, we should get to high hall you know I, I heard that's the the safest place um, learn that older Raven Guard is in the Grand Cemetery there's no A in cemetery. Um, um, retrieve Raven Guard and cure him of his malady. Lulu pops out of Raven Guard's head like a bad mushroom trip in The Last of Us. Lulu, uh, so the way I described it last time was that uh, in his in his uh, stupor with the helmet on, Raven Guard was just hugging nothing. Um, 
And as soon as they finished the ritual of returning, Lulu just kind of appeared in his arms. Like he was holding her the whole time, but she just wasn't quite there yet. So that was how I described it last time. So that's what I would do if they don't already have Lulu with them. Um, retrieve Raven Guard and cure him of his malady. Um, once they've done that, they can um, leave El Terrell, head to Power of Friendship made her spawn. Absolutely, that's how Lulu works. Leave El Terrell, head to um, Fort Knucklebone. Um, so here's the thing. The next gate is find the Bleeding Citadel. Uh, sorry, one more gate. Learn of the Sword of Zario. Um, so that's... Bum, 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 bum. Raven Guard saw a bloodied woman carrying a long sword, fresh blood stream from an nasty cut, blah, blah, blah. Um, Lulu remembers helping one of the Hellriders plant Zariel's sword. Raven Guard and Lulu are convinced that the sword of Zariel is the key to saving El Terrell. Um, and that it is the key to saving Zariel. To saving El Terrell. Um, Archers of Alloc to get to the Citadel. Incorrect. Um, so that is how I ran it last time, but I'm running it closer to the book. Arches of Allah is actually the way that you reach the, um, uh, the prison of Kachichi, Kachichi's Mall. Kachichi, that's it, Kachichi. Um, let's, uh, there's a pronunciation in here. Of course it isn't, um, but it should be in here. Ah, pronunciation guide. Every book should have one of these. Kaschichi. Uh, Kaschichi. There we go. Um, so yeah, the Archers of Allah take you to Kaschichi's Maw um, if they decide to take the path of demons. Uh, so technically the next gate is find the Bleeding Citadel. In order to do that, they can do one of many things. Fort Knucklebone to um, Haruman's Hill to Path of Demons Devils. Or, and here's, here's where I start uh, identifying shortcuts. Wish that Lulu's memory is restored. Um, so, this is, this is me... Um, Let's search for wish. Uh, if creature fails a saving throw and remem remains under the spell, Feeble Mind, from the River Styx, the spell's effect for 30 consecutive days, the effect becomes permanent, no save, and the creature loses all its memories, becoming a near mindless shell of its former self. At that point, nothing short of a wish spell or divine intervention can undo the, undo the effect. Our players do are not clerics. Um, we don't have any clerics. So there's no divine intervention. So the only thing they can do is wish. They could wish to undo Lulu's memory loss. That is a thing that they could do. Um, alternatively, they can go Fort Knucklebone, and Harmon's Hill, Path of Demons, Devils. So, the next, uh, so our, our split is, um, Recover Raven Guard. And then, find the Bleeding Citadel. Magic Satnav? Oh, <laughs> you've reached your destination, friends. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, once they find the Bleeding Citadel, um, uh, go through the test of whatever. Bum, bum, bum. Click. Yeah. What is it called? Is it, is it test? Test. Proof. Damn it. Worth. Test of worthiness. It'll go in. Um, prove your worth. Um, they're going to mow down you to get... Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it's a level 20 speed run. That's the point. I'm not scaling this shit up just to make it difficult for level 20 characters because that's just going to make the game take longer. 
Um, I did do that for Curse of Strahd because I was worried that the game would take four hours, and that's not very fun for a speedrun event that's supposed to take all day. Um, so, uh, shortcut. Yeah. Uh, wish for Lulu's memory to be restored. I uh, wonder if anyone's going to drink Demon Icker. Of course someone's going to fucking drink Demon Icker. Someone is always going to drink Demon Icker. It's probably going to be stuff. Um, Roland's, Roland doesn't care. Ro Roland's a cool dude. He drinks Demon Icker and doesn't afraid of anything. Um, go through the test of worthiness. Um, and then the next um, gate is deal with Zario. Um, find a way to... Free the Alturians' souls and find a way to release Alturel's Earth Mode. Um, so this is literally like, um, and it's literally going to be save Alturel. Those are our splits. We've got five splits, which makes sense because there's five chapters. Um, you know, chapter one, you know, at the end of chapter one, you go to hell. Cool. At the end of chapter two, you recover Raven Guard. Cool. At the end of chapter three, you find the Bleeding Citadel. Cool. At the end of chapter four, you've proven your worth. Cool. At the end of chapter five, you should have saved Elturel. Why didn't I see that coming? There's one fucking split for every chapter. That was difficult. Um, so I want to spend the rest of this time figuring out how the fuck they can shortcut stuff. Points at Yinigu, Zariel, and Gargal. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're right. If you're trapped in the shield, you're cool. Fuck you. Yeah, basically. Um, thanks for getting me demonetized on YouTube. <laughs> I am not monetized on YouTube. So, wish for Lulu's memory to be restored. That'll skip essentially the entirety of Chapter 3. They don't need to do, um, uh, they don't need to do Fort Knucklebone. They don't have to, uh, get, you know, War Machines. They don't need to go to Harmon's Hill. They're definitely never going to Hell Wasp Nest, because as soon as that Hell Wasp shows up, they're just going to, ew, dead. Um, they don't need to go through the path of demons or the path of devils. Neither is going to be important. Um, <laughs> you can bleep it. Thanks. Um, like, th they're just not going to have to do any of these things if they wish for Lulu's memory to be restored. Um, I could see chapter three, if they go through it the way as intended, taking anywhere from four to six hours. So that shortcut could cut out four to six hours. Um, so the question is, how long do I want these splits to be? So how long do I expect each of these sections of the game to take? Prove your worth. Uh, let's give it 60 minutes. Um, find the Bleeding Citadel, which is literally the entirety of Chapter 3. I'm going to give it six. Uh, let's give it four hours. I could always wish to know the location of the Citadel after they get her memory back. Um, they could... Well, the thing is, if they get her memory back, she knows where the Citadel is. Um, like, that's a thing that she knew. Um, they could just wish they were at the, uh, the Citadel. That is absolutely something they could do. Um, I would say that teleport, the spell teleport, would not work. Um, actually, let's see. Let's, let's, let's look at how teleport works. Um, so, here's the thing. Um, ba -ba -ba, bleeding Citadel. Uh, character's line, Sword of Zarya is hidden in a place called the Bleeding Citadel. If she's alive, Lulu helps him get there. So they don't know... Do they know that it's called the Bleeding Citadel? When do they actually learn that it's called the Bleeding Citadel? If it goes on long enough, you can wake up on a weekend and watch us. Yeah, I mean, uh, our plan is to actually play for 12 hours. Uh, so, you know, once we hit the eight hour mark, that's like 9 a.m. your time. Uh, and that'll be international dateline. So that'd be 9 a.m. Sunday for you, I guess. Um, um, Bleeding Citadel. I don't think the players ever actually, like, learn that it's called the Bleeding Citadel. Um, yeah, like, th there's no point in the book where it's just like, oh, yeah, it's called the Bleeding Citadel. Um, but, like, yeah, huh. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Yeah, like, everyone's, like, Bleeding Citadel, Bleeding Citadel, Bleeding Citadel. Um, but, 
no one really like it never tells you the dm to tell the players that oh yeah it's called the bleeding citadel like when you learn about the sword it's like um uh ba -ba -ba. demon was hurled back as an alabaster palace rose up around the sword the winged elephant fled and took to the red sky of avernus where it watched as a bloody scab grew up from the ground to engulf the palace and the enormous demon so like there's a citadel and it's covered in bloody scab but no one ever like calls it the bleeding citadel interesting um so let's say four hours to find the bleeding citadel uh recovering raven i, I think um um it's gonna be about an hour um i'm gonna give them 90 minutes in here el is not a very long chapter uh and then save el we're gonna go 60 minutes um so all said we're actually looking at only eight and a half hours for our splits um it could very well be that the players take much longer than this um incidentally um character introductions uh and i always do this i always do a 15 minute character introduction split just like we hit start and then okay cool introduce your characters um we're on the clock go um not gonna lie i'm gonna enjoy watching them curb stomp or skip stuff so am i you know it's, it's always fun to watch them um curb stomp lower level threats or absolutely skip ridiculous amounts of content um i'm also uh very anxious to see how many summons we get to slow them down um so that's a that's a thing that happens um so all said, this is eight hours and 45 minutes in my splits. Uh, so I will, have, I will consider them a success if they beat eight hours and 45 minutes, but it's still very possible that we actually take closer to 12 hours. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I said that I was gonna come up with these list of shortcuts and I don't know that I need to, do I? Um, you know, I, I know what the gates are. So, do, what can you skip? So the, the, the thing is that they can skip basically anything. Um, you know, they, they don't really need to learn about the Cult of the Dead 3. If they somehow manage to skip to Vanthampore being involved, like if they if they cast Legend Lore, like let's let's just let's just brainstorm. Let's say they cast Legend Lore on the Hell Spike. Um, they can learn that uh, you know, th this is this is the kind of spike that would drag an entire city down to hell, and they go, "What in the fuck?" Um, and then they, you know, maybe I'll even reveal that it specifically would drag it to Avernus. Uh, so you know, they they go, "Okay, what the hell? Why is that?" And then they go, "Okay, well, are there any cults in the city dedicated to Avernus or the leader of Avernus?" Hey, Ian, who's the leader of Avernus? Rol Arcana, Zariel. Um, and then they go, okay, are there any cults in the city related to Zariel? And then they say, well, I don't know. I have some magic that'll find out. Um, and then it's like, oh, well, actually, yeah, with that magic, you learn that the cult of Zariel exists. And uh, here's where you can find it. So they can just skip all of this. You know, they, 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 can, they can just skip right to learn about the Vanthamboar involvement. Um, Tim, Tim knocks the Celestial Insidiator open break the spikes manually and ride it up. I mean, that's uh, it's the solar insidiator, for one. Um, um, yeah, I mean, they could technically cast knock on it nine times. Um, they break this, the chains, I'm assuming, um, and then ride the, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, so that would get El Terrell out of hell, but it wouldn't save their souls because they need to break that contract somehow. Um, so the Alturians are still doomed um but at least they're not in hell anymore so they get the rest of their shitty lives <laughs> in you know the, the rest of their ptsd ridden lives uh those who have survived thus far um so legend lore on the health pipe uh into divination with regards to zario um so i mean like that that's a shortcut they could do um and that would skip you know that, that would skip the uh, dungeon of the dead three um it would skip the low lantern um <sighs> what else what else what else what else um what could they do um so once they're in el Terrell, they could um in el Terrell, um Use magic to find uh, a Raven Guard. 
they do that and hop off the island as it flies up, kicks Ariel's ass and banishment out of there. Um, yeah, I mean they could they could you know go murder Zariel as the uh, city is flying up. Yeah, that's absolutely something they could do. They could just one hundred percent skip um, all of chapter three and four. That's a possibility. Um, um, skip all of chapter three and four by just breaking infernal chains and murdering Zariel. Yeah, I mean, that's, oof, that's a possibility. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways this could go. Um, you know, they don't even need to banish men out of there. They have plane shift. Um, Zariel's CR 27. So technically, we've actually, uh, we have actually fought uh, Zariel in a speed run before. When we did our Tyrnia Dragon speed run, uh, our bit goal was to have Zariel appear in the final fight. So the, the players actually fought against Zariel and Tiamat for like a round or two before Zariel died. Um, I mean, this is like the 12th round of combat. that Tiam It was the end of the 10th round of combat that, uh, that Tiamat um, got summoned and then Zariel was still alive for like two rounds at that point. Uh, and then, uh, and then yeah, the... Uh, it was, but yeah, they, they fought Zariel. Um, Zariel and Tiamat's foot poking out a portal. Uh, so it was Tiamat, it was the entirety of Tiamat, but she was at 50% max HP because they partially disrupted the ritual. Um, so, Legend Land the House. Uh, yeah, so I don't think it's super. Oh, uh, you're like 35,000 channel points from here, little summon. That sucks. Um, yeah, we, we, we put it pretty high because we don't want everyone and their mother to be able to do it like every time. Technically, I can summon anything that I want. Um, Nightwalker. Hostel. Okay. I can summon whatever the fuck I want, whenever the fuck I want, because I have infinity channel points. Um, but yeah. Um, the uh, I, I don't know that it's valuable for me to um, figure out um, more shortcuts. Um, you know, I, I've, I've already identified all of the gates, uh, at least I think all of the gates, uh, and then, you know, if they skip something, they skip something. Um, so I think we're basically done at this point. Um, so this took way less time than I thought it would. I was expecting this to be an hour and a half, um, but we kind of just crushed it. So, um, yeah, so this is where I'm going to stop it. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thanks for the suggestions and, and all of the... Uh, the conversation, mostly shadows, mostly shadows, but thank you Fragonator and Anxious Emmer and CJ Rose and uh, everyone else for being here. Um, so uh, if you want to see how the session goes, check us out uh, this coming Saturday, December 19th at 9 a.m. EST. Uh, that's where we're going to be playing this entire speed run. Uh, we're probably going to take a break every three hours or so, uh, just to stretch, get some food, etc., all that jazz. Um, and then uh, if you if you like you know, seeing me DM, you like, uh, the, you know, these kinds of people. Uh, check us out uh, also on Sundays at 1 p.m. for Curse of Strahd, Mondays at 6 p.m. for Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. All these times are Eastern. Uh, and then on Thursdays, I do DM prep like I'm doing right now. Normally, I do DM prep for Curse of Strahd and Odyssey of the Dragon Lords, uh, which is what I usually run on Saturdays at 4 p.m. EST. Um, giveaway plug. Sure, let's do a giveaway plug. Uh, if you'd like, you can spend channel points to enter our monthly giveaway. Our giveaway for December is a digital copy via D&D Beyond of Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. Uh, so go ahead and get your entries in. Uh, the drawing will be on January 2nd, uh, which will be our first D&D game of the month. Uh, and we're going to pick one, enter, one entrant. Um, and the more times you enter, the higher your chance of winning. Um, if you, if you're watching this on Twitch, thank you for being here. I, I love having you guys here live. Um, and you can also check us out on YouTube, um, where we have every single session and every single DM prep stream we've ever streamed. Um, we're coming up on 250 videos. It's like a thousand hours of content. Um, it's just an absolutely ridiculously huge backlog. If you're on uh, YouTube, check us out on Twitch. Um, we're live four days a week, as I said before. Uh, and then we also have a Discord, an Instagram, and a Twitter. Um, you can check those out at your leisure. 
Uh, any January plans yet? Not yet. I don't know what we're going to do for January. I'm kind of hoping that they announce something um, before January, but um, holding out hope. Um, so thank you everyone for being here, and I hope to see you all on Saturday. Bye!